of that by six and a half and then take half of that. Now. Was it not recording? It fell over. It fell over and mid, stopped recording. Uh, yeah, mid speech. What? Oh, what? I'm just scratching my head. Oh, I thought you said something. So somebody take point one five, square it, multiply that by six and a half, multiply that by a half. What? Point zero seven three one. Point zero. Wait, wait, you want me to square point one five? Multiply yeah. Then multiply that by six and a half. And then divide by two. And yeah. then divide by two. Yeah. Yeah. Point zero seven three one. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. All right. So it just seems small. Point zero seven three joules. Okay. All right. Now, if you got that, you could also find V max by, if you, you could set that equal to V max, take this, multiply by 2, divide by the mass, get V max that way. You can put it into here, doesn't make any difference, okay? But what you've got to feel comfortable with is, and this is going to be huge, is this idea that at any point, that V max and that amplitude, if you set them to extremes, are equal to each other. That's going to be a key part of the test. So now, if we come back over here, and I increase that spring constant, what should happen to the, and we'll go back to normal, okay? So let's do this. Let's keep the spring the same, and we'll take off a 100 gram mass, and we'll put on a 250 gram mass. So what, if I put on a 250 gram mass, what should happen to the parent movement? Should it be going faster or slower? You just took it back. Oh, <laughs> so if I put on a 250 gram mass, what should happen to the period? It should be the same. It should decrease. It'll decrease because fast is... Whoa! Okay. Well, that was a I, think, I think because of... Well, yeah. I... I, I Wait. Okay. So now, let's go. Let's go slow. I don't have that fast reflexes. So the period went up to 1.28 seconds. So as the period has gotten bigger, what's going to happen to the frequency? The frequency is going to become smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay? So, all right. And now, if we make, if we increase the spring constant, okay, now what should happen to the period of the oscillation? It should decrease. Yep. So, what? Honestly, it kind of is. Those arrows are too big. Would you like them to be skinnier or shorter? Better. <laughs> no, it, was it was about the, the same as the initial. I like the colors. I need to get like complementary. Are you, those are you could see the color palette of the simulation. Yellow and green are not green So period became a little bit smaller. Okay, dropped to that point nine. You don't like the colors? <laughs> <laughs> what would you prefer? Red and blue. Yeah, red and blue. Okay. Turn the gravity in the spring on, then it'll be red and blue. <laughs> Red, white, and blue. No colorful. Oh, say can now, you see? Red and yellow. What I did now is that I put the gravitational force on it. So why is that arrow staying the same? Because gravity is constant. constant. Gravity is constant. Value. Now I come in here and I put on the spring, which is going to be the red and blue. So here's your complementary colors. Okay? Yeah. What's going to happen to the spring force? 
It's going to change. It's going to change. So now when I put that on, okay? Okay? So many arrows. So now, but here's an interesting thing, How many thing, arrows though. do we need? So That's once you act as That's big right. as, this is such a big oscillation that once you go past the center, you're actually past that equilibrium point, and the spring is actually as, acting as a compression and pulling that down. So if you don't want that to happen, then let's kind of make that oscillation not so big. <laughs> okay, maybe we okay, can do bigger than that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what? <laughs> Hungry for what? Spring. Now, if you throw in the net force, <laughs> oh, it would just act the same as the. Yeah. Now, why does the net force and the acceleration basically have to match hand in hand? Because, because force is net force, net force equals mass times acceleration. So notice that right there in that middle, that's when that net force goes to zero, that's when that acceleration goes to zero. Got the big idea. Okay. All right, so one last little mathematical parlor trick. And oh, no. I just short my physics knowledge and were we talking about? Physics one about how you can determine the height of a bridge. Oh yeah, I'm just like when I see each other rock off a bridge, you figure out how tall it is. With a bungee cord, not a chain. Don't bungee jump with the chain. All right, let's sit down. Okay. So now I have an unknown mass on the. Uh, when it's just a bunch of bungee cord things. on the spring, right? So if I knew the if I knew the spring constant, so I could figure out what that mass was going to be. If I knew the spring constant, I knew like the frequency or whatever, I could solve for that mass. Now, because of the fact that this thing is is operating vertically, and we're having we have this gravitational field, if we were to just and I, I don't think I can do this, but if I were to just let this thing go down to the, oh, come on. <laughs> so if I knew how far this thing stretched from the equilibrium line, okay? So in other words, if we, if we go back and we started this whole lab again, and let's say we're trying to find the spring constant. So if we could measure like how far it stretches down, okay, we could say, oh, right? We could draw a graph and we could go, oh, okay, we could draw a graph and we go force here, we go elongation here, we go F equals KX, right? But that F is gonna be what? MG equals KX, because that's how you would calculate that. Okay? KG? KX, my bad. Kilograms. <laughs> Kilograms. I was, yeah. Therefore, M equals K. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Therefore, <laughs> the G's cancel out. Yeah. Therefore, force is equal to K. K, K. Now, so we can do a little bit of a parlor trick, okay? Just a little bit of a parlor trick. If I solved this equation for mass, could I substitute that in here? For that mass. Okay. So if I solve this for mass, I would have mass equaling kx over g. Right? Okay. And that x would be the change in length created by that mass. Right? So if I take this and put that in there, I get 1 over 2 pi. Right? So then I got K divided by K delta L over G. So what's going to happen to the Ks? They cancel out. You get 1 over 2 pi times the square root of? You go out of eight and get K. Now, if all, if all goes well, 
what should what unit should I end up in? No. Yeah. Well, because I've got G, which is in divided by L, which is going to be in. So the meters cancel out. I get the square root of one over second squared. I get otherwise known as okay. So that's kind of a little cool part of the trick that you can do if you have something oscillating and you don't know the mass, then all you have to know is how far that stretches it, and then you can figure out the frequency of the oscillation. Okay. I know you're going into the weekend, and it's kind of an odd deal. It's a relatively short lesson. Your assignment is relatively short, so you have the rest of the time to do this. Every problem is like this. This thing on a full of carols on a bike tire, right? This is the air getting like spinning. Pulling those actions. I'm going to spin on my head. I'm going to whip up. And it's like, I'm going to do it. How are you doing this? That's exactly how that one is. 15, 16, 15. Oh, that is short. This is already too many. I don't have to worry about it. It's like farther than I can count. Oh, okay, so that's um, nope, not quite done. There you go. I gotta check out some boiling water in the lab, which I forgot all about. Oh, no. Oh, oh time. Half as many as yesterday.